Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining Impact Christian Church online service this morning. I'm going to be talking about, of course, the time when the season that every Christian is going to celebrate this month, which is about the birth of Jesus Christ, the coming of Christ 2,000 years ago. And I'm going to title my message this morning, God with us which actually gives us hope in this life. So I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. And uh, before we do that, let us bow our hearts in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your time, for the time that you've given us this morning. I pray that you'll speak through my mouth. Let your words speak deep in our hearts so that we can be drawn closer to you and experience that wonderful fellowship with you in a personal way so that your life can flow through us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's turn our Bible to Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. And if you have your iPad or iPod or whatever, Bible app you have, read along with me. Verses 18 through 23 of Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And he will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sin. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful season that we are entering today it's it's been about what eight six almost eight months since the first lockdown that we had this year but this year as it, it's coming it to an end i want to share with you something that god wants us to have that is hope because god is with us god is with us he never leaves us Praise the Lord. The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem actually was not when everything was calm and peaceful. Little like the song says, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. 
when actually it was so much far from being peaceful and bright. At that time during the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, the king that was in in a in, in ruling the uh, ruling the uh, the kingdom at that time ruling um, at that time was King Herod the Great. He was a ruthless one. He was very rude and mean king. And even during the birth of Jesus, as Jesus was um, growing up, the king gave a command to kill all the babies under two years old. So it was a very um, not peaceful situation politically as well. At that time, there was a political upheaval. Yet... In the midst of all the problems that were going on at that time, God fulfilled the prophecy which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah way before it occurred, 700, over 700 years before prior that. So amazingly, God is in control over this situation. And the prophet Isaiah in chapter 7, he said that a virgin will bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Hallelujah. Now, it's interesting because the, when the prophecy was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, the similar situation was also taking place, where at that moment, interestingly, Isaiah, when he spoke this prophecy, the world was not peaceful also. So, if you read in chapter 6, before Isaiah spoke this prophecy, in chapter 6, we read there, we can read there that the prophet Isaiah, he answered the call of God. When God said, whom shall I send? And Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. So, that moment occurred when King Uzziah died. Now, King Uzziah was a good king, but after his death, it was a, a big turmoil that was going on and taking place at the time. So there was a difficult year. So Uzziah, had, as a king, had served uh, Israel for m many, many years, for 50 years. And uh, at that you know, desperate time, God called his servant Isaiah. So in chapter 7, that is 20 years after uh, Isaiah was in the ministry, the King Uzziah's child or grandson, actually, which is uh, which by the name of Ahaz, he r was ruling uh, the, the nation. So the nation back then was divided in two, Israel and Judah. Israel, the uh, uh, northern kingdom and southern kingdom was Judah ruled by Ahaz. So during that time, these two kingdoms were at wars. And what was going on back then, the political upheavals and the time that Jesus was born was a, just about similar situation. It's not even calm or peaceful at all. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of the history, but as we are entering this month of December, as we are in the month, the first week of the this month, where soon uh, Christmas just around the corner, and everybody's getting ready to celebrate Christmas. We should remember that the birth of Jesus was not to be celebrated just with having a lot of parties and entertainment, but instead, it should be celebrated because of the genuine and eternal hope in Christ. It also reminds us always of the importance in anchoring our faith and love for the Lord Jesus Christ. So as a Christian, we have a true and genuine hope in Jesus, even in the midst of the challenges that we are facing today. 
So with that in mind, I'd like to share a few points from the scriptures that we just read. How we can have that resilient hope in Jesus Christ during this time. So the first point that I want to share with you this morning is from verse 18 where it says that before they came together, she was found with child. In other words, the first point that I want to take from this scriptures, the first lesson is that we need to have the right focus during this time. If you want to have that resilient hope, you need to keep your focus right, which is on Jesus Christ. Now, remember, when Mary was found with child, she was before, she was, that happened before she got married. So during that time, it was a taboo and it was something that was not supposed to happen because it means that she had committed adultery. Now, in our culture today, of course, you know, having a child before marriage seems to be fine and you know, acceptable, but not according to the Bible. So back then, it was also not right to have a child before or to be pregnant before marriage. So if you were married, what would you do? I mean, you, would, you could get depressed. If you were in her shoes, you could get really stressed out and really scared of what would happen to you. And yet, Mary, she kept her focus right. She has the right perspective and a mindset of what already happened. She knew that what happened to her was of God. And she kept her mind and her heart on Christ, on Jesus. She continually keeps that right focus. In the Gospel of Luke, in verse and chapter 1 verse 38 says that she replied to the uh, words that the angel of the Lord gave to her. She replied this, I am your servant, be it unto me according to your words. What a beautiful response from Mary and how she kept her focus on God. She knew that everything that happens is right in the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Dear friends, this Christmas, we need to have the right focus, which gives us two important points to remember. First, we need to remember that God is in control over all the world's affairs, over everything that is going on today. God is the Almighty God, and nothing is impossible for Him. As Luke chapter 1, verse 37 says, that nothing is impossible for God. So nothing happens in this world would surprise God. In fact, He orchestrates everything in this world to fulfill His purpose. Second thing to remember is that we need to remember there's a spiritual battle going on today. And we need to understand that our battle is not against flesh and blood. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says that, but against the principalities and powers of darkness and rulers of the air. So we need to use the spiritual weapons to overcome the battle by filling our minds with the Word of God. Do not use physical battle to do spiritual battle. We need to use spiritual weapons to have victory, to do battles spiritually. So this Christmas, remember that God is good and He is in control because His Word says so. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I have a plan for you. A plan that is so peaceful and hopeful future. So we need to fill our minds with the words of God. We need to do the battle with the spiritual weapon. However, we all have a choice. We can try to face the challenges that we face through our own wisdom and strength, or we can trust in God and look to Him to be our shield and our defender. You know, there's a story during the World War II, a U.S. Marine was separated from his platoon from his unit in, on Pacific Island. The fighting had been so intense and in the smoke and the crossfire he had gotten himself lost. Alone in the jungle, he could hear enemy soldiers coming in his direction. So scrambling over, he found his way up 
a high ridge to several small caves in the rock. So he quickly crawled inside one of the caves. Although safe for the moment, he realized that once the enemy soldiers looking for him swept up the bridge, they would quickly search all the caves and he would be killed. As he waited, he prayed, Lord, if it be your will, please protect me, whatever your will, though. I love you and trust you. Amen. After, he, after praying, he lay quietly, listening to the enemy begin to draw close. He thought, well, I guess the Lord isn't going to help me out of this one. This is it. I'm going to cut the diaper. But then he saw a spider begin to build a web over the front of the, his cave. As he watched, listening to the enemy searching for him all the while, the spider layered strand after strand of web across the opening of the cave. He thought, huh, what I need is a brick wall, and what the Lord has sent me is a spider web. Well, God does have a sense of humor, he thought. But as the enemy drew closer, he watched from the darkness of his hideout, he could see them searching one cave after another. As they came to his, he got ready to make his last stand. To his amazement, however, after glancing in the direction of his gate, they moved on. The enemy moved on. Suddenly, he realized that with the spider web over the entrance, his cave looked as if no one had entered for quite a while. So he said, Lord, forgive me, he prayed. I had forgotten that in you, spider's web is stronger than a brick wall. My dear friends, we all face time of great trouble. When we do, it's so easy to get to forget the victories that God would work in our lives, and sometimes in the most surprising ways. Hope in God. That's the message of Christ, of Christmas. Second point that I want to share with you is this. We need to anchor our faith in the love of God. Verse 24, if we want to have this resilient hope, then Joseph did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. You know, Jesus was, Joseph was wondering that he would just, you know, kind of like break up with Mary. But the angel came to him in a dream and told him not to do it. So I believe the one reason why Joseph obeyed the words of the angel was because of his love for God. He was rooted in the love of God, as Paul said to the uh, church in Ephesians, to be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. So this thing reminds us of two important things. That we are reminded of how God loves us so much. That he longs for us to come to him. Especially during this season, we need to come to him. This Christmas, God wants to remind us again that he wants to meet with us. He has invited us into his presence and wants to have that relationship with us, that fellowship, that union with us. God has provided for us so many opportunities to build our faith and our trust in him. But many times we fail to make the most of our out of this opportunity. But I pray that during this Christmas time, my friend, we take this opportunity to come to have fellowship with Him. The second thing that we are reminded of is this, that we are reminded that we have a future in Christ. This Christmas, God wants to remind us that He has a plan for us. No matter how bad things are, or no matter how bad things seem, God has a plan for our lives. He's still in control. Dear friends, the story of Christmas did not end with the birth of Jesus. Listen, after the death of Jesus, the news about him continued to spread. As the Apostle Paul spread the gospel around the Roman Empire, eventually it came to a town in southern Turkey named Myra. The church was eventually planted there, and years later, a young man from a Christian home became the bishop there. During the time of this Roman emperor, 
Diocletian, there was a time of a great persecutions of Christians. And this young bishop was thrown into jail and was to be killed for his faith, like so many others had already been killed for their faith. However, God has so much greater plan for his life. And miraculously, Constantine the Great replaced Diocletian as emperor. Constantine accepted Christ and proclaimed Christianity the religion of the Roman Empire. And the young bishop of Myra was saved. The young bishop was set free and went on live a long and productive life. He was one of the bishops that attended the First Council of Nicaea, from which we have the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. He was well known and loved and had a reputation for generosity and compassion. He was a man of prayer and his ministry was marked by so many miracles. So much that when he died, he was made a saint by the church that bishop's name was Nicholas or Saint Nicholas. Of course, we know of him today as the Saint Nicholas. And because of his great love and his generosity, he came to exemplify the spirit of giving at Christmas time. And after the protest, Protestants Reformation in Germany in the 1500, his transformations into Santa Claus began. In Protestant churches, he was called Chris Kringle, derived from the Chris Kindle which means Christ child, Dutch settlers to America introduced him as St. Nicholas or Sinterklaas, which soon became known here as Santa Claus. Now, God has a way of fulfilling his purpose in someone's life. Because I want you to remember that during this Christmas time, during this season, I want you to remember, God has a plan for you. Hallelujah. If you're feeling hopeless this season, I want, you, I want to tell you, there is hope in Jesus Christ. No matter what happens, God is in control. And the same God that saved Nicholas, the bishop, from that prison so long ago, the same God can save you in whatever prison of fear you find yourself today. We're going to partake the communion now, as always, first Sunday of the month. I want you to remember, especially during this time, that Jesus Christ, He is called God with us. He's always with us and He never leaves us alone. And as we part of the communion today, I want you to know that He lives in you if you have accepted Him as your Lord and Savior. And He longs to have that deep and intimate union with you and with us as His child. If you're ready, get the bread in your right hand and we are going to partake together. As I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 23, it says this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He gave his life for us, and now we are one with him. Let's partake it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Take the cup in your right hand. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. This cup is the wine, which represents the joy of the Lord. He wants you to have joy, hope in this season. The hope that brings joy. He wants you to enjoy His blessings, His presence, even right now. Father, I thank you so much for the joy and for the promise that you never leave us. God with us. We are free. 
we are delivered from any fears in this life. In Jesus' name. Let's drink it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our hearts and pray as we close the sermon today. Father, I thank you. I pray for everyone watching right now. Whatever they are going through, that you'll give them peace, joy, and hope. Resilient hope that is not going to be shaken by anything else happening in this world. Because our hope, our faith, our joy, our love is anchored in you. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. Bless your people right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to close our online service today in prayer. I pray that as we ponder and remember of God's goodness this season, our hearts will be filled with peace, joy, and hope in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your words today that we are reminded of your goodness, of your faithfulness in our lives. I pray, Father, whatever your people are going through right now, you will give them strength and victory and also Lord fill them with your love and peace and joy and I pray right now that your blessings will be upon your people may the peace of God our Father and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us from now until Jesus comes again Maranatha everyone who loves the Lord says Amen.